Okay, so what I'm going to show you now is the uh, MS660, as you can tell right here, on the newer machines it has it right here, but it's not here. You can look off the top, it says MS660. This one uh, is my little baby. Um, I've always had steel products, so uh, I know several people who have Huskies. Huskies are good saws. Um, you know, I think all of them are, are fantastic. They do the job you need and they'll last as long as you take care of them. So this is the end of season on this. So our season here in uh, Oklahoma is during the winter time. You don't want to be out with the heat in the summertime out here mowing. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't realize, sorry about that. I had a nose itch, but I didn't realize, uh, we're actually from uh, Ohio area, Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, around that area. And uh, the one thing I always appreciated about up there is the middle of the summertime, you can go outside and you wouldn't get the uh, breath taken out of you from the heat. Well, here in Oklahoma, it is definitely a different type of heat. When you walk outside, it takes your breath away and it is just hot. And I'm, I sweat real bad anyways, just like today, it's in the uh, lower 60s and I'll sweat like you wouldn't believe. But uh, when it gets more into the summertime, oh my gosh, I'll walk outside, it takes your breath away and I start sweating bad. So, uh, um, so that's the one thing is, uh, believe me, you don't want to be out cutting wood when it's hot. Okay, so the uh, MS660 here was used on uh, cutting down a few trees out here. And uh, so I'm getting ready to retire it and clean it up for the summertime. So it does good. So you can kind of see it is kind of dirty and everything else. And uh, what I need to do first thing, so what I'm gonna do first thing is I'm gonna run the gas out of it, make sure the gas is gone out of it. I'm gonna take and uh, I'm gonna clean and uh, sharpen the chain clean the uh, bar. This one happens to have a 25 inch bar on it. I'm going to do uh, the same process. Uh, if you saw the other video that we had on uh, the MS 362 C, I'm going to do the same process on it. I'm going to clean. Uh, I'm going to go on ahead and clean around the uh, cylinder, the uh, air, um, air filter. And then also, wow, well, look at that. Huh. We're going to take a look at that and see why. It, there it goes. Pull back in and we're going to clean around the uh, flywheel and everything else and pull this all apart. Now, again, I'm going to say, like I did in the other one, this is the way I clean it. Is it the right way? Who knows? OK, this is the way I do it. So if you learn something from it, from it, great, you know. Um, every time I watch another video or somebody else doing it, I'm like, wow, I never thought about doing that. So take it as instructional. And, uh, you know, if you learn something from it, from it, great. If not, you know, hey, maybe you'll get a few laughs from the gaps that I had, believe me. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to go on ahead, take it over here and start it. And man, I love these 660s, these MS 660s. They have a deep, grumble to them and I love the sound of them but I'm going to run it out of uh, gasoline so I'm going to take once I start it up now this hasn't been started in probably a month and a half so you're going to see what it is to start this thing after a month and a half of not starting and then I'll dump this uh, gasoline which I'm probably going to take and uh, because I'm going to dump that gasoline into a uh, gas can I have over there to keep the gas I'm going to go on ahead and blow the outside of this area off in a hurry because I don't want that getting into the gas. Come on, there you go. Yep. Looks a lot better. Okay. 
get that back up. So you're going to get to see what it's like with this being a cold start. <clears throat> so yeah, this is the same day as we did the M, the uh, MS362, and of course it's still raining. It stopped raining for a while until uh, Tanya and I picked this up and start to do this video, and then guess what? It starts raining again. So, all right. Of course, this is a 660, so it doesn't have the Mtronics uh, carburetor on it or anything. So it's the uh, old style carburetor. So put it all over to all the way down the choke, and everybody knows with these stills, you pull them all the way to choke. You pull it until you get a uh, like a spark that goes bang. Yeah, if you want to hear that one again, you can replay this, but. Then when you hear that spark, you put it up to partial and then you uh, pull it again and it goes. So I got the chain brake on, pull it down, decompression on all the way down and then see how we do. Okay, there's our spark. Bring it up, it's partial choke and here we go. Man, I love the sound of that. That just sounds awesome. So, you remember on the last video, had problems putting that back on? Well, there we go. Chain brake on. Now we're running out of gas. I actually got it on that time. Did you see that one? That was unbelievable. <laughs> there we go. Tight. So, we want to save that gas for later. Put it over there for now and I'll grab it later. You notice one thing. You always keep the chain brake on, at least I do. That's something I always suggest. You can tell it's starting to rev up a little bit, so it sounds like it's about ready to run out of gas here in a second. About ready to stall. Here we go. like we got it all right 
little disclaimer because I probably better mention it. I didn't mention it in the other one. Watch out for the exhaust. It's hot. Okay. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go on and put on my glasses. And I'm going to take the air and I'm going to kind of blow everything off. Blow the outside of it off before I start to take it apart. So... Huh, let it last. There we go. So. Give the compressor, okay? It is a little bit loud, I apologize. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go on and I'm going to take off the chain and the uh, bar and notice the orientation of the bar. I didn't do this on the uh, 362, but I did notice that it was sitting where it said still. So, what I do is whenever I clean or I sharpen, I generally try to flip the bar over so that way the uh, wear on the bar stays even between top and bottom okay because all your pressure is going on here and these rivets and everything from the chain tend to wear on your bar a little bit so uh, that way it uh, just uh, takes and extends the life of your bar so this time when I put the uh, bar and chain on going to be with the steel flipped upside down just like it was with the uh, 362 that I'd done okay so remember this is the way I do it it's in no it's in no way the correct way but this is the way I do it because these uh saws are expensive you know whether they're steel whether Husqvarna or Johnson Red or you know any of the others and you're, you need to really take care of them, which is what I try to do. I try to take care of them since I have a large investment in them, and then I can use them for years and years and years. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is take off the bar and chain, uh, clean the bar, and uh, put the chain into diesel fuel. And uh, once the uh, bar is cleaned, I'll put the bar into uh, oil, dip into oil, and then I'll take and uh, clean around the sprocket and everything in here and uh, re-grease everything, uh, clean it, clean into the brake compartment. Then I'll put that all back together, pull off the uh, top and everything here, and then I'll clean around the uh, engine um, fins on the cylinder. And then uh, I'll take and I'll pull off the uh, recoil and clean around here, clean the uh, um, air filter and the pre-air filter and everything and, and go from there and then put everything back together. Now this is, like I said, this is the way I do it, okay? So let's go on ahead and let's start and let's uh, go on and uh, 
take off the chain and the bar and clean them in a hurry. Do you notice how that was not very tight? No, it, it doesn't need to be too tight. The other one, this one was perfect. Okay, so the other one on the 362 was over tight. All right. So. Now this being an MS660, the MS660 doesn't have the captured nut like the MS, MS362 does. Okay, so the newer... MS661s are the newer generation. So they have the uh, IntelliCarb and, and everything like the 362 does, and it has the uh, captured nuts like the uh, 362 does. Okay, so this is an older generation, so it does not. This is a full blown carburetor, it doesn't have the IntelliCarb on it. Okay, so yeah, you can kind of see how dirty that is. I want to clean this thing off in a hurry as I pull it off. Some of these, when they're that bad, I like to use a uh, cleaner degreaser, and this WD-40 uh, cleaner degreaser does pretty good, and just spray it on here. So like I said, I'm not going through, I'm not going to be a big stickler about it. Yep. That's the, uh, so I'm not going to be a big stickler about it. All I want to do is just basically clean and get the majority of the garbage off of here and everything else. Okay. Like I said, I'm trying to clean it. on there and it's good to me. We'll put that right there. Okay. Now I'm going ahead and clean this off. So, come on, there we go. So, I can put this chain right here. Now, this is a 25 inch uh, steel chain. So, take, clean it up, put it in the diesel fuel. And of course, I'm going to have to grab a hand thingy to pull the thing out. So, This time, okay. so see, it's important to clean all this up on these. You got these holes right here. And these holes are what the oil goes into, the chain oil. 
and that's what uh, pushes in and grabbed by the uh, chain and disperses it. Which I'm pretty sure a majority, probably every one of you guys know that. So, but let's go on and clean it out. You can see all that garbage coming out of there as I go down through. See that? So you got all that garbage coming out of there, which is good to get all that out. Now, going ahead and put that end into oil and let it soak for a while.